Hi, I'm Kimberly, and today I'm having a talk with Catherine K. Cruz about how she met Jesus and what Jesus has done in her life. Hi, Catherine. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, yes, um, I'm Catherine, and um, I want to share with you uh, my testimony, my life, what um, God has done with me. Um, I'm a 36 year old woman. I'm married. I'm a mom. I have a three, a four year old. And um, we live a beautiful, simple life in our caravan. And um, God has done amazing things, and I want to share that with you today. Um, so I'm going to share a bit of, of my background um, from my childhood. I was, I'm from Chile, so I grew up in Chile with my, my family, and I was uh, I was born in 1980 and um, from what I remember is we had a very beautiful upbringing um, lovely with my with my with my parents and stuff and they were there um, but I do remember there being a lot of um, because of the way they were brought up and the people around us there wasn't there wasn't harmony there was a lot of emotional dysfunction um, so my brother and I, unfortunately, bore the brunt of that, had um, suffered the consequences of, of just lots of um, mainly psychological and there was um, physical abuse too, um, of, of not knowing how to deal with, with children and, and their emotional needs and their physical needs. So we got, you know, beaten up several times and did not have the, the love and support that we needed in the presence of my, my parents because they were busy working a lot. And, um, and the family around us, their families, um, my, my aunties and uncles, they were not loving and supportive at all with us because mainly because my dad was not the one that they wanted in my mom's family. So we, um, we, for the consequences of not being, you know, being part of a, of, a, of a father that was not wanted around. Um, so we weren't loved, so we weren't, we were rejected and um, every time we would have cousins over, um, we would become pretty much invisible. So um, it's hard to feel that there's no worth you know, in your life, that you have that support, that you have that love, and from your from your direct parents, um, most of the times, because they weren't there, they were busy working, and my mom had shifts, and although she was, and she is a loving woman, she wasn't there in those growing up years. We were brought up with nannies and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of absence and and really really rough times and then we moved to America and that was very difficult I was around eight years old so um, again working and we were on our own and doing our thing with my with my brother so a lot of things we had to deal with at school on our own bullying lots of bullying my brother and I um, so that takes away your self-esteem your self-worth it starts building up this belief in life that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, you're not worth it, um, you're, that you can't amount to anything. And that just destroys your self-esteem or your self-value if you're not built up and supported by those people that, you, that your care is for, that is your care is under. Um, so um, we kept moving through life and then we came back to Chile and adolescent years, teenage years, very, very difficult. Um, that's where I started the, the, my struggles with anxiety and depression um, because the, the, at, in high school the, the bullying continued because I was a very, very shy person um, and with a lot of insecurities. So and not support at home, so a lot of loneliness, just feeling all that loneliness, it just eats away at your life. And to be brought up also in, in the only aspect that I knew of, of religion or um, of belief that I heard was that if 
we don't behave well, God will punish us. Can you imagine how it is to be brought up with a belief that God is, that you make mistakes and God is going to go out and get you? It's a terrible lie and deception to be brought up with. It just even destroys you even more. So you don't have hope and you know that you're messing up constantly and you're under humongous condemnation. Um, so fast tracking, um, I'm into my 30s. In my early 30s, I, I meet my husband back in Chile and we were working and we were working really well and um, at a really good, good company, very good wage, very good lifestyle. We were there for two years in an Australian company back in Chile and then that company goes broke and it goes belly up and we're gonna have we're gonna have to sell we're having to sell absolutely everything so then um, my husband has to come back because he's Australian so he has to come back and we sell everything and we come to Australia in really bad conditions so hard times you're living the life pretty much and then you lose it all and you have to start from zero in a foreign country. So um, started the visa process, I came here and that's where another stage of my life that I'll say is crucial in terms of bringing me in, into God was coming here to Australia and living one of the, the hardest moments in my life because first of all, I was in a new country on my own I mean with my husband but without my family and friends so I had left my country my home um, to be in a new land and in really really tough circumstances with pretty much zero work zero money and having left in really traumatic circumstances from being um, made redundant and not being paid out or anything like that so extremely traumatic circumstances which deteriorate your health even more and your mental state and your mental ability and you just start wondering what is going on and um, I remember coming here and being in our little apartment that we were renting and I remember that point which was crucial in the sense of really asking for the first time I think in my life if there's a God, what am I, what am I here for? Because everything is going wrong. I just feel, seem to have so much pain in my life. I don't have fulfillment. So money has not filled that void. Success, um, six, um, work success has not done that. Having a, a husband has not fulfilled that. Um, being in a new country has not fulfilled that. There has to be something else because this void is just unbearable. And I asked, I got down on my knees and I cried on, on the floor of that apartment and asked God, what, what am I here for? If you don't have a purpose for me, just wipe me out right now. I was extremely suicidal, I had no purpose, I had no reason to live, I had hit rock bottom. I was in full pain, I had no hope, I couldn't keep a job, I felt useless and just I just couldn't bear it anymore. So, um, in my desperation, I went to my computer and looked up, put on Google, and I know this is crazy, but I did. I looked up on Google and I put, God, um, what on earth am I here for? And a book came up called The Purpose Driven Life. Uh, what, on, what on earth am I here for by um, Pastor Rick Warren. That book um, changed my life, really. That book um, led me 
to the Bible because it had scriptural references and by the way I had never opened the Bible in my life because I was brought up Catholic being Catholic you, you just don't <laughs> at least in mind where I was brought up we did not open the Bible we it was a taboo really um, so this book had scriptures and I was like ah, okay, I'm, I'm enjoying this book and it has all these references how am I gonna understand this so Coincidentally, not coincident, because God had, God was doing all His work through all of this. Um, I met this lady at one of the uh, the works um, at the veggie shop where I was working as a as a reg uh, as a at the register machine, and she she said that they were doing Bible studies at the library in Brisbane, and I had very little hours of work, so. Um, I went ahead and did it and went and started having the having um, with this fellowship group it's a Christian fellowship group they don't have a name they were reading the New Testament learning about Jesus and I was blown away by it by a lot of things and I was confused at the same time because they were reading about giving up everything and being apostles and I was like well I barely have anything as it is <laughs> I have to give up everything. I was so confused. I was like, what's going on? I don't know what to do. Um, but I did not give up on that. And um, and then through life, I met this other lady that was a Mormon. And this lady met these Seventh-day Adventists, which I had never heard of in my life. And she invited me to a party and we met these other, these Seventh-day Adventist Christians. and they were constantly reading the Bible and I I was curious as to why they were constantly reading the Bible so I asked a lot of questions and then I started this journey with them and eventually I had to decide which group I was gonna learn the Bible with and I felt inspired to go with with the Seventh-day Adventists because I felt they were really being truthful about um, the Word of God everything I was reading from the Bible it they were following so that I felt highly inspired by the Holy Spirit to continue down that path and that's kind of where my my um, journey started with with um, with all of that and as I started reading the Bible and and learning from God I just started feeling so much more peace I started feeling hope I my life started being transformed and I realized that that God loves me I started knowing that he's for me he's not against me and I started learning the truth and um, in two th um, 2010 I got baptized I felt the, the calling and and I knew that he needed to be in my life that I needed after hitting rock bottom and having nothing, I needed a savior. I knew with all my heart that I needed a savior. That I was nothing. That I was absolutely nothing and nothing I had or, or thought I was didn't come to anything. So I, um, I came to him and he has truly and utterly transformed my life. And um, he's made me realize how much I need him and how powerful his word is and and how I can only depend on him he made me realize my my fragility my frailty how weak I am how delicate I am and that and that I am worth the life of a God that I am worth so much that a God from heaven stepped down from his throne and gave my life, his life for me and for you. It just blows me away how that could be. But I thank him every day that I am alive because I do not want to live.
I did not want to live. And I know there are many of you that are suffering from anxieties and depression. I've been there. It's horrible. I don't wish it upon anyone. Anyone, no. It's a horrible place to be in the darkest place without hope, where you just want out when life is worth living and when you discover that there's someone that is willing to help you and save you and transform you and renew you and give you new life and that's what Jesus is he wants to give us new life he wants to restore you he wants to transform your life your life might be right now a complete mess as my life I still have my struggles but now I know that I know that I know that I need to depend completely and completely with all my heart upon him and his word and prayer constant prayer and praises praise him praise him every day for all the good even though you might be having a bad day, God does not stop being awesome. His awesomeness doesn't stop any moment. You're just not able to see it because you're in a bad place. But when you realize that despite the fact that you feel like rubbish, that you feel so bad that nothing's worth it, God is by your side, still blessing you with air, with the sun, with beautiful trees surrounding, with food, with so much things he still blesses the good and the bad he is that good and he's there for us to surrender to him he will heal us but he's a gentleman he's a very very wonderful gentleman he will not push himself inside of your heart you gotta open that heart you gotta open the doors of your heart and let him in because only he, he knocks at the door all the time. But you, it's your choice to open that door and let life in. Because that's what Jesus is, the way, the truth, the life. And once you know the truth, if you abide in his word, in his word, you truly are his disciples. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Please look that one up. I don't have the reference, but I do have the reference of this other one I want to give you, which is Romans um, 12, 2. And this has been, has been amazing for me. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Only God can renew your mind and, those, and take away those lies and deceptions and beliefs that we've had that have, were implanted when we were little kids. So much of that stuff is rubbish. So much of that is just plain lies. And you need to know what the will is and what God thinks of you. God says, he loves you, he accepts you, that you're worthy, that you're priceless, that you're worth the life of a God. You're worth the life of a God, don't you ever, ever forget that. Once you realize and you see your value at the cross, you will see your true value. You will really see that you're worth so much. And that changes you that transforms your heart and I encourage you all of you that you come to him all you who are weary and heavy laden and he will give you rest take upon his yoke his yoke is light and easy and he's gentle and lowly he is waiting for all of you with open hearts to save you to clean you to take away all those feelings those thoughts 
that dis self disgust what others have damaged he wants to help you forgive those that have harmed you that has been a great thing for me right learning curve to forgive those that have done me harm because Forgiveness is not for those people. Forgiveness, God made it for us. Because if we don't forgive, we're the ones that are poisoned inside. And we're the ones that die inside while the rest have gone on with their lives and you are poisoned. You gotta give that to God. Fully and utterly, you gotta give that to God. Because He's the perfect judge. He's the one that's gonna clean all of that. He's gonna wipe that. He's, he's gonna lead, he's gonna take care of those people in his perfect way in his perfect way he will take care of those people you don't have to worry about that you just have to move on with your life hand it over to him as he forgave you we must learn to forgive others because as others have messed up with you you will mess up with others and you will want forgiveness too so um that's all I can say is come to him I encourage you you have nothing to lose but everything to gain to gain new life and eternal life in him who gave his life for you and for me I just want to finish with um, prayer for you my greatest desire is that God uses me in my pain my suffering my experience and that he uses it for his kingdom and for the salvation of his children like you his children to save you my pain is not in vain and yours is not in vain if you hand over your pain to him he will put it to good use there's others that have suffered just as you have suffered and they can feel identified and touched by you because you share that pain and you can help others bring that to God's glory give God glory give God the glory and let that pain be used for his kingdom and the salvation of the souls that need it I put that pain right here at his feet and for you for you to be saved through him let me finish with prayer for you with all my heart dear Lord I ask that the Holy Spirit guides me in into everything I my life is for him, by him, in him. I thank you that I have received the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you have transformed my life. I thank you, Lord God, that I am here serving you, Lord, and helping and reaching out to my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that need you as much as I need you every day of my life. Lord God, our journey with you is a daily journey of surrender, of humility to realize that we need you every moment and we need your word and we need prayer, we need to be talking to you constantly as beautiful friends Lord God because that's what you want. You miss us Lord God, you're a jealous God, you're a God that wants to be with us, help us to have that humility Lord God to come to you to acknowledge that we need you to share our joys our happiness and to share our sadness with you and to always feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and to have the hope I ask for these beautiful children of yours that they may see the light that they may see Jesus that they may come to you Lord God that they may be healed as you have been healing me Lord God and that they know that their value and their worth is the is has um is the equivalence of the life being given by your son Jesus. Their value is is in Jesus on the cross, Lord God. Guide them into all truth. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you do for all of us, Lord God, for your mercy, for your love. May all everything in our lives before your honor and glory father we bless you and we thank you so much now and always and i thank you for what you're going to be doing in the lives of these your children lord god and i thank you and i praise you for all the transformations that you're going to do father 
In Jesus' name I praise you and bless you, now and always, and forevermore. Amen.